Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Let's Talk TEFL podcast. I'm Jackie, and joining me is Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Jackie. All right. Yeah. So, Jennifer, let's jump into our um, ESL thing for today. So, we are talking about fun games to play in class. So, we are going to talk about six of them. So, you're up first, Jennifer. What's your first one? Okay. Um, I love PowerPoint games, which obviously requires having a large overhead monitor to uh, show the other students. Uh, you can, um, like with online teaching, and I say PowerPoint games, but you can do them uh, with Google Slides as well. And yeah, just like, just like board games or task cards or whatever, like that's a very broad spectrum of games, but it's, yeah, any, any kind of game that you put on a PowerPoint where, you know, kids get some sort of, interactive element that is not just looking at the teacher and, you know, talking with the teacher. Mm -hmm. One thing about PowerPoint games, um, I do use them myself once in a while. Um, it depends on the class size, I think is like a key thing um, with this. Um, oh yeah. If I have like say fewer than 10 students, then it's all good. There's enough um, student talking time and kind of interaction, but with big classes um, of say like 20 or 30 or 40, it's it's a little bit tough when like one student is, is doing it and the other ones are just like a little bit passive. So um, I would use it like before a midterm exam review or final exam review um, once in a while, but um, yeah, so that's just something to keep in the back of your mind, I think everybody, um, class size yes. and, and student talking time. Yes, and I will add that I do prefer PowerPoint games with lower level students that aren't really like that is kind of like pulling teeth to get them to talk anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's a little bit more motivating mm -hmm. and uh one thing that i've done with bigger classes is have uh the tables work as a team mm -hmm. and either they can confer and then give one answer or they can each have their little homemade whiteboards which i'm pretty sure we've talked about before it's just a laminated piece of printer paper and a whiteboard marker, and they can like flash up uh, their answers uh, if it's going to be like a quiet activity. Oh, that's a really good idea that all the teams can kind of participate or yeah, be like yeah. active that way. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, so there's definitely ways to combat that for sure, which is good. All right, so my my activity, my first one is bingo. And I know it's a classic kind of vocabulary acquisition activity. Um, and so I actually think it's not super useful um, if you, like the students have like apples on their board, apple, banana, cucumber, whatever. And then the teacher just says apple, <laughs> and they cross off apple, banana, cross off banana, um, that kind of thing. So I like to mix it up a little bit and turn it into um, a more difficult vocabulary and more difficult listening activity. So instead of just saying like banana, I would say um, it's a fruit and then students would look and maybe they have like five fruits on their board. So they're like, oh, maybe orange, maybe banana, maybe apple, maybe melon. And then I would say, and it's long. And then there might be one or two options for that. And then I say, and it's yellow. And then at that point, students are like, oh, it's banana. But I never actually explicitly say banana or say that vocabulary word. So um, yeah, so students like really enjoy bingo, but that's just my way to make it um, more educational. Yeah, and now the name of the game is on the tip of my tongue, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Like the, the game where you have little cards and that you have a list of words that you're not allowed to say oh, taboo. when you're trying. Taboo, yes. yes. So you do it almost more like somewhere between a riddle and taboo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. And like the best students will always know, but the ones that are yeah. like a little bit weaker will be like, oh my God, what's the word? And like, usually their friends will tell them. So it's like, it's fine. But I write down like for sure in this one, definitely write down the words that you give hints to and then check the bingo boards carefully because there is a much higher degree of error for sure. Students Indeed. will like cross off the wrong word. And I always get them to put like a single X with a pen or use a highlighter. Like I explicitly tell them don't scribble off the word completely so I can't read it because I will check um, just to make sure you've got all the words correctly. So yeah, 
Next one, Jen. Um, I've never heard of this one before. This is a new one. So Dance of the Ostriches. Yes, Dance of the Ostriches. <laughs> I love it. Um, but you have to know your students. Like some of your students will not be up for it. It is uh, a game where it's two students pitted against each other and you tape a flashcard to their back and the other student has so they stand facing each other with their hands behind their back and the goal is to be the first one to read the flashcard off the other one's back oh wow <laughs> that sounds exciting <laughs> it um it really is just kind of a, a silly little game that uh is is fun to spend a few minutes on <laughs> <laughs> and kind of lightens the mood. And it's obviously called Dance of the Ostriches because that's what the students look like when they're like craning their necks around to try to look behind the other students. Um, so this seems more like a kid's game than an adult game oh, to me, is it? Definitely 100% is a kid's game. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a kid's game with a, a pretty low upper age limit before the kids would just be like, I'm not doing that. I will just stand <laughs> here and let the other one win. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, that sounds entertaining. I've never done it before, but I can imagine yeah. that it would be So yeah, I would like, definitely uh, not run through like a whole bunch of vocab words or anything. It's just something for fun for, you know, a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a good time filler, just like at the end yeah. of class. Yeah, <laughs> basically. If you want to kill some time like before the bell rings. <laughs> Like, all right, let's play this game. Um, and almost no prep or materials either, except for flashcards exactly. and some like tape. Just or need two flashcards and that's it. All right. So my next one is um 20 questions. So I'm sure everyone has played this game before um, in their lives, but it's um a really versatile game to do in um, ESL or EFL classes as well. Um higher level students um, can do the normal 20 questions game, like a choosing a person, place, or thing, a noun, basically. And, um, and especially adults can handle kind of the abstract um, thinking that's required for this game. But with like lower level students or um, younger children, um, if, we're, if I'm teaching about animals or vegetables and fruits or like whatever I'm teaching, maybe jobs is another good one to use. I'll limit it, I'll call it the 10 question game. And then I'll limit it to that category. So um, generally I'll go first in choosing kind of the secret, the secret thing. And then um, students will ask me questions. And in my classes, I count a guess as a question. So it'll prevent people, like if they know it's jobs, that'll prevent them from saying like, doctor, lawyer, teacher, fisherman, yeah. police officer. Because <laughs> then it's like, they just make random guesses and don't even try. So if each guess counts as a question, then they actually have to ask um, good questions. And so once that's done, once the students have figured it out, then um, usually the person who makes the correct guess um, gets to go next. And the key is getting the students to tell you who they, who who their secret person or what their secret thing is to prevent <laughs> chaos yes. because it's often the case where students maybe don't entirely understand the question and they'll give wrong answers so definitely just prevent um anger <laughs> and like frustration yeah. in your class just by getting the student to tell you uh, yes. what they're thinking and I've, I've also had students who didn't want to relinquish their turn and it was pretty clear that they changed their secret answer midstream. <laughs> and some people will choose very random things like artichoke or like whatever, if you're doing fruits and right. vegetables and like, who knows that? Like, I don't even barely, I barely know what an artichoke looks like. So like, it can be really frustrating. So I actually make them choose something that I just say, you have to choose something that basically everybody in the class knows. The challenge isn't in like knowing some obscure vegetable. The challenge is like, in using English, making correct questions. <laughs> yeah. Yes or no questions. Yeah. So next up, Jen, what's your My, what's your my next one is also a, a pretty broad one. It is fly swatter games. So fly swatter games, just um, anything where you have like a bunch of flashcards and some fly swatters. You can do it with one fly swatter where it's one kid at a time you know, like a racing game where they have to run up as quickly as possible and run back and give it to the next person. Or it can be teams. 
you know, where you have, you know, anywhere from two to five students at a time with fly swatters. Uh, and you can do it. There's so many ways you can do it where like you can have them on the board. You can have like if you've got a really large table, you can spread them out around the table. So then the kids kind of have to move around to to get closer to different things. And again, you can tailor what you do for them to use the fly swatter according to their level. So if they're really basic and it's just like basically some new vocabulary that you're trying to see if they know these words already, um, you can just say the word or like you could do it the way that you do your bingo where you give hints and they have to figure out what it is the fastest, in which case, you know, obviously if it's like banana, you could say like it's yellow and then they'll, you know, somebody will be hitting a duckling and somebody will be hitting, you know, a beach ball, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, so you can do it a bunch of different ways and it's just really versatile to if you have flashcards in your room you should also have some fly swatters because you can do lots of games with them and even university students love it i've i've done this game with my uni students um and yeah they're like super happy and like loving it <laughs> like it's yeah. super fun even strangely like adults love it like beyond university advanced level english learners it's like for kind of obscure vocabulary words i've i've done it with them on the whiteboard and um did kind of a small competition like between two people and would give hints and like i don't know it was just like a really good time and sometimes if they would hit um that vocabulary word if they got the correct one they would have to make a sentence in order to get the, so they get one point for hitting the vocabulary word and they'd have to put it into a correct sentence um, to get the second point or something like that. So yeah, it's just, it's really versatile and you can literally use it for absolute beginners to um, uh, very high level adults as well. Yeah, yeah, it's just um, like what sort of add-ons you do to let them get the point that, that levels it up to the higher level students. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right. So the final one is um, actually two, Pictionary and Charades. So this is basically the same game, except for pic Pictionary is drawing and then Charades is acting out. So um, if I have like a, a kind of like a party day, um, I don't love to just do like nothing, <laughs> if that makes sense. I, I don't know. I feel yeah. like just kind of like bringing nothing to class on the party day except a few snacks and maybe like a video is sometimes a recipe for disaster. I think people feel like, like adults, I think feel like I've paid for this class. I've made the effort yeah. to come here. Um, and then parents feel like that about their kids too. If they ask them, what did you do in class? Oh, I just watched this like Home Alone movie for my Christmas day and ate right. potato chips. Like, I don't know. It's just like, yeah. it's not super educational. So that's not my general thing. So this is kind of a nice compromise, I think, between like doing nothing and then doing like a full on lesson. Um, yeah, so I generally will choose like for higher level students, if it's like a Halloween day or Christmas day or whatever, Christmas party, I'll um, teach or just kind of review like vocabulary words related to that holiday, like Santa, presents, Christmas tea, uh, Christmas tree, Rudolph, um, reindeer, whatever, like that kind of stuff. And then um, we'll play Pictionary or Charades and yes, yeah, students can draw it or act it out. And um, it totally depends on the level, how complicated it is. And um, yeah, you can also use it as a review activity at the end of a unit to review vocabulary that you've taught. Um, yeah, during the past few weeks. So, yeah. Yeah, I usually do that um, with sort of lower level students. I'll do it for like a vocabulary review and with higher level students, then I just sort of give them, you know, free reign, pick mm -hmm. a, a movie or a book or whatever. But I, I don't like them to go too obscure because there's always going to be like the one who's going to pull out some really random <laughs> book or movie that they're the only one that's heard of. Oh, the way I play it is that I choose the vocabulary words. So or the, the phrases or whatever, and I just put them in like, a, I write them down on a paper and then I put them in a big envelope and then the person who's going has to like draw um draw one out of the envelope and then, oh, okay. and then do it yeah so I don't yeah. actually let students choose See, <laughs> so, I, yeah so yeah I different. would give them the word if it was like vocabulary words but if it's older students and I'm just sort of letting them have a little bit more free reign I will let them you know if we're doing like books and movies or whatever I just let them 
do their own thing. So I think that wraps up our fun games to play in class. So um, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Teach, Travel, Learn, or on my blog, teachtravellearn.com, which will someday get updated. Yes, perfect. All and right. where can and people if, find you? Uh, yes. So if you want to find out um, more details about fun games to play in class, I have a blog article with, I think there's more than 20 um, games you can play and I'll post the link. A book that you might want to consider picking up is one that Jen and I wrote, 101 ESL Activities for Kids. So we have lots more ideas of, uh, yeah, fun games and activities to do to do with your students in class. And um, for all the podcast info, you can check out eslactivity.org slash podcast. All right. Thanks, Jen. Until next time, everyone. Thank you.